Every videographer and filmmaker has that one piece of video gear that they just regret buying. Well, I have five that I'm gonna be sharing with you in this video. And if you stick to the end, I'm gonna break down the whole total cost <gasps> on what I ended up losing. What's up everybody, welcome to Mike Zuniga Films, the channel where we talk about how to start and grow a successful video production business. Now, like you, when I first started out as a videographer, I made a couple mistakes when it comes to purchasing video gear. Shut up and take my money. Now, at the time, it didn't seem like such a big mistake, but looking back now, knowing that I don't use these certain pieces of video gear, it's money down the drain, or was it? Now, first off, I just wanna say that this video is inspired by another video I saw by YC Imaging, and he broke down the five pieces of video gear that he regretted buying as a filmmaker. Now, after watching his video, I started to remember different pieces of video gear that I just regret buying earlier on. So I got my trusty iPad with me right here, and we're gonna start with number one, a Steadicam rig. And I don't mean like the Zion Crane 2, Crane 3, or Ronin S, those types of gimbals. I mean the ones where you have a metal vest and I'm gonna break it out for you right here. This, this is basically the whole, or part of the rig. There's an arm that comes out. See, there's a little bit of dust flying around. As you can see, I have not used this in years, but I've still kept it. You put the camera here on top and you have a little monitor right here in the bottom. And yeah, the vest was heavy. It's not like the gimbals you see today. Now, when it comes to movies and commercials, there are camera operators that still use this because the cameras are just heavy. Why did I end up buying this? Well, a couple of years ago, I traveled to Washington State to film real estate and some music videos. And I also wanted to rent a red dragon. So it was part of my budget. I was able to rent a camera that was better than what I had. And I also wanted to play around with it and see what else I can film and maybe see if this was a better camera than what I was already using. So I rented the red camera and I purchased this and I ended up using it for one shoot. But I ended up making the most of it knowing that I was only in Washington State for a few days and I was able to film other things besides what I was hired to do. And one of the things was I was staying at my friend's apartment in Seattle and this was a new apartment and he was good friends with the management in the apartment. And I wanted to use the rig, use the rig camera that I had and create a video for my portfolio because I knew in the future I wanted to create more videos for commercial properties and this was a great example. I asked some of my friends, Brayden and Danielle, shout out to both of you, and also Alex too, thank you for hooking this up. I literally filmed the whole commercial using this rig, using the red camera, and to this day, as you can see here, they still use the video. And this was filmed back, I believe, in 2016 or 2017, and they still have the video up. See, even though I still didn't use this rig, I was able to make a return on investment. Not only with that apartment complex using that, but I was also able to place that in my portfolio and get new clients for virtual tour videos for commercial properties. Because when commercial real estate companies reached out to me and asked for a virtual tour video, I had this to show. And this helped me book those clients. In the short term, a little bit of regret buying, purchasing that, but in the long term, I uh, made a better return on investment on it. Okay, so now to number two is the Zoom H4N recorder. This is the audio recorder. And I purchased this because, well, I thought I needed it. I saw other filmmakers use this and turns out I didn't really use it. Well, the main reason is that I ended up using a clip-on mic, a lavalier mic, just like I have right now, and it was attached directly to the camera. I didn't really need an external audio recorder. I probably used it once or twice, but that was it. So what I ended up purchasing afterwards is a Zoom H6, and that was more beneficial to me because as I started filming interviews with more people at once and needing multiple mic setups, then a Zoom H6 was more beneficial to me, and I was able to dial in the gain for each mic specifically 
rather than the Zoom H4, which only used buttons. Okay, so number three is the Sony RX100 Mark IV. I was traveling a lot and I made it a point to film behind the scenes for all my video shoots and travels. And I really didn't wanna use the main cameras that I was using for the video shoots. I wanted to keep the main camera safe because I was moving around a lot and I just needed a camera that I was able to, you know, in case it got banged up, it would be okay. Plus it was able to zoom, it had a flip out screen, but what I ended up finding out is that the battery life wasn't great. I ended up just using my phone most of the time because it was in my pocket instead of having to get that Sony camera out every single time from my backpack in case I needed to film something. It was just so easy just to get my phone, as you can see, here's my phone right here, and just film things. And so that's why I just ended up not using that camera and yeah, even to this day. So number four, Glycam. XR2000. This was the first ever gimbal that I purchased. And well, let's just say that I got frustrated right off the bat. I used it a couple times. The footage was so shaky and I got so frustrated that I just stopped using it for three months. But after a while, I ended up upgrading to the Glidecam, the Devon Super Tramp or Devon Graham signature glide cam which i ended up using a lot more the reason why is because the handle was adjustable so as you can see here is the first ever glide cam i purchased the glide cam xr2000 <laughs> still some dust on there it's been just sitting on the shelf you can see the handle here i'm not able to adjust that and that was a a big you know deal for me but it set up the foundation for me to learn how to use the glide cam, the Devon Graham signature glide cam so much faster. And eventually when I got the Zion Crane 2 gimbal, man, that was just a walk in the park. So I at least got the foundation down of learning how to use the gimbals, how to walk with the gimbals, different camera movements. Even though now I don't use it at all anymore, it was a good learning tool. All right, so number five, it's a GoPro. But why? It's a GoPro Hero 4. Man, GoPro, it's a great camera. You can take it anywhere. I found it very beneficial when it came to filming underwater, filming around water. I took it on my trips, filming behind the scenes for a lot of video shoots. But again, I just did not end up using it a lot. Like, you know, phone. The, the phone was the main filming tool, my main camera. I could film time lapses, I could film slow motion, and it was just in my pocket that I could just film things instead of getting my GoPro out from my backpack and going through all that hassle. Now, I still have my GoPro and I still use it for certain types of projects, but for the most part, I've been using my phone to film behind the scenes. I'm not, I haven't been using my GoPro very often. So. I guess you can say that's kind of a, a regret in a way, but I still use my GoPro when needed. So it's good to have in the arsenal. Now, with all that being said, let's break down the total cost. How much did each of these cost at the time of purchase? The Steadicam rig, it cost $1,000. Ouch. Yeah, I, I get it because it comes with a full on metal jacket metal vest it's carrying a heavy camera so thousand dollars there zoom h4n uh i think it was around 350 400 but i looked at the price now it's a lot lower so in between i'll just put 350 yeah audio recorder is kind of expensive how much for the sony rx 100 mark 4 well that was a thousand dollars yeah that amount could have went to purchasing a better camera that i would use for my actual video shoots instead of just behind the scenes okay so number four glide cam how much did that cost well that cost uh three hundred dollars as you can see it was a good investment at the start but i don't use that to this day so how much do you think it costs for the gopro hero 4 
at the time of purchase, it cost $400. And the total cost comes out to be $3,050. Down the drain. Okay, it's not down the drain. <laughs> it's a little too pessimistic. But even though I say I regret this just for the purposes of this video, I really don't regret anything for the most part because with these tools, I made sure to get the most out of them. And at the end of the day, in the long term, I made a return on this investment through future projects that I made through the content that I created from these tools. So that's basically the thing. When it comes to video gear, one key takeaway is make sure to do more research, invest in video gear that will last in the future, in the next three years, even five years, technology is advancing at a very rapid rate. That's why when it came to me figuring out what camera to purchase, especially for my main cameras, I made sure to see what cameras was coming up next. Is there a new version coming out? What should I invest in? So for example, instead of me purchasing the red camera, I rented it out to film and test and see if it aligned with the type of video work I do. And it didn't. Instead of being left with a $50,000 bill, I only paid $2,000 to rent that out. So knowing the type of video work I do now, you know, it's on the move, you know, content creation, it has to be very versatile. I purchased the video gear that aligns with the type of work that I do now so that the type of gear I get is more worthwhile. So hopefully this video has helped you. If you enjoyed it, please like, comment, and subscribe, and put down below any video gear that you regret buying. With that being said, I'll see you on the next video. Peace. This gotta be real big. I gotta make it just for my kids and for their kids, just kids. That's wealth years and years. Promise my brother soon as he out to finish this bid. We finna do it bigger than anybody ever did.